Hello and welcome back to Beirut, the capital of Lebanon. In this video, I am going to go into detail explaining the currency situation, which is an absolute must need to know if you're planning to visit this nation, because unless you're Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos, you will not survive without changing your money on the black market as a tourist visiting in Lebanon. For example, the current fixed rate, the official rate is for one US dollar, it's 1,500 Lebanese pounds. However, on the black market, the rate as of today, by the time you're watching this, it will have already changed. The rate today is one US dollar, is equal to 26,900 Lebanese pounds. The currency has devalued massively. The country is currently suffering from hyperinflation. If you're planning to visit Lebanon, you need to bring cash in either US dollars, euros, or in my case, I brought British pounds. That's also accepted and then you need to exchange it on the black market when you arrive. Depending on how long you're going to stay here, then you can bring, say if you're coming for two weeks, maybe you want to bring 500 US dollars. Or if you're staying for nearly a month, maybe a thousand is a better bet. Also depends on what kind of places you're going to be eating at. You'll be needing to pay for your hotels in local currency because you cannot use your card. Restaurants, supermarkets, hotels, they are all charging black market rates. They're not charging official rates. So their prices reflect the rate on the black market, which means they're massively inflated. You need to go on Google and type in Lira rate. The first thing that comes up is the website which will show you the current black market rate of the day. So that fluctuates from day to day. Sometimes, for example, when I first arrived, it was 25,800. Today it's 26,000. 900 but earlier this year it went as high as 34,000 and it could also increase dramatically once again it could also drop we don't really know you have to feel for the locals here who earn Lebanese pounds their entire lives and many older people lost a lot of money from the fact that their currency has devalued massively um, those who had bank accounts in US dollars and euros are in a much better situation but as a visitor, as a tourist coming here, then bring your cash. Then you ask your hotel where you can exchange your money on the black market. Either they'll send a guy to the hotel who'll come with a bag and you change with him almost a bit like a drug deal. <laughs> or you go and find a small office or shop who will take US dollars, who will take euros, who will take pounds sterling. I hope that all makes sense but I'm gonna head out now and we'll talk a little bit more about the situation here and I'll show you prices of different places as well, like restaurants. Out onto the streets of Beirut to grab some breakfast at one of my favorite little places just down the road from where I'm staying. So here it is, this is the place. They have menaish and different types of Lebanese pizza and then also kake, which is the one I'm going for. Check out the oven. All freshly made. Hi. I have a kake with uh, cheese, tomato and olives. There's a constant stream of locals coming here because it is so popular in the surrounding area. And I originally asked for the one with tomatoes and olives with cheese, which is my favorite. But I think the kid misunderstood me, so I have cheese and za'atar instead. But uh, it's still really good. So, Karke down. Let's find out how much it costs. 
Uh, how much is it? 50. Yeah. Shukran. Thank you. Which at today's rate is 26,900. So let's go to the calculator. And 50,000 divided by 26,900 makes that 1.8 US dollars for the car game. So following my breakfast, I'm now back here at the hostel. I'm going to call a Bolt to go to the Alpha store to top up data on my phone. Uber is also available in Beirut, but it's more expensive than Bolt. So where to? Alpha. Okay. So 42,250. So less than two US dollars to go across the city to the Alpha store to top up my phone. been dropped off here by the Alpha Store which is the internet service provider that I've been using while in Lebanon and they still charge at an official rate which is interesting because it's actually owned by the government I believe so data and internet here has been very cheap if you have exchanged at the black market rate I'm going to show you even though I'm leaving Lebanon tomorrow I'm out of data so I could do with it just to see me through and I just kind of want to show the general prices. I want uh, 77,000. And what's your name? Uh, Jason Billum. Jason? Billum. B-I-L-L-A-M. And um, just out of interest, how much is 20 gigabytes? 20 gigabytes uh, for 30... Okay, so I've just topped up 10 gigabytes on my phone because it is so cheap. Interestingly enough, on the board up there, they have the official exchange rate. It says 1,515 to one US dollar, but it costs me 79,000 for 10 gigabytes. Uh, so divide that by today's rate and it's only just under three dollars in total for 10 gigabytes and you can get 20 for next to nothing it's just probably an extra dollar or so for 20 so that shows you just how cheap internet is here because they're going on the official rate trying to cross the road but uh not quite getting lucky yet waiting for my opportunity i have plenty of practice from cairo so uh Beirut is nothing compared to that. I'm gonna seize my opportunity. Here we go. <laughs> and cross here as well. Right now I'm gonna pop over to some shops and things like that to show you some general prices. I'm getting honked at. Here we go, made it all the way. There's a shopping center pretty close by to here. And they have Starbucks, international chains and that sort of thing. So let's see what they're charging. Are they going by black market rates or are they going by official rates like the Alpha Store? We shall see. The cost of fuel in Lebanon is extortionate. Somebody told me that you can pay more than your monthly salary, like I guess to fill a tank, um, it's about 500,000, something like that, which is very expensive for most people based on the fact that a lot of people only earn the equivalent of $60 a month. So if you have to fill your tank a few times each month, then you're paying a million, 1.5 million a month if you fill it three times on just petrol alone. So a lot of local people can't afford 
to fill their tanks and there's far fewer cars on the road. In fact, a local Lebanese person here in Beirut even told me that he doesn't even know how there are cars on the road because people's salaries just don't cover it. Which means that a lot of people are somehow Western unioning money to themselves in US dollars and exchanging it to get more for their buck and things like that. There are all sorts of ways uh, to get around it, I suppose, but for the average person, life is very difficult. The cost of just electricity is extortionate. Most people uh, don't have the luxury of a generator or solar panels. And so paying for electricity and power is very expensive here because it's not owned by the government. The electricity is controlled by private companies. And so they monopolize the market. The few that do control it, I think it's either one or two companies. Do let me know in the comments below. And so they can charge very high rates. In fact, they even control the power on the traffic lights, which you'll notice all over the city are never on, including these right here. And only certain parts of the city, like the street lights, get power on certain days of the week at certain times of night. And it's very dark when you walk around. If you saw my first video from Beirut, skip to the end, you'll see what I mean. Passing the highway with no lights, an ironic situation. Entering the shopping center. Starbucks here. Let's have a look at some of the prices. So if we go by the black market rate, let's just say roughly 25,000 is one US dollar. So sandwiches at Starbucks is $2 for whatever, although I wouldn't recommend eating the sandwiches. Some small cakes and things here, 55,000. So $2 for a lemon cheesecake. And for an espresso single, 30,000. Turkish coffee, 35,000, just over $1 again. And Americano, 35,000. So really just over one dollar if you're going by the black market rate for most coffees and Starbucks. So I never thought I would include a Starbucks in any of my vlogs, but here we are. And I never really get these kind of drinks, to be honest. I'm doing it for the purposes of research, really. I much prefer an espresso or whatever, but I thought let's just get one of their classic like frappuccinos and see how much it comes to. So on my receipt here, it says 50,000 for the Frappuccino. And so let's do that with the current rate today. So 50,000 divided by 26,900, $1.8 thereabouts for this enormous Frappuccino. And in case you're wondering, 10,000 for a mineral water divided by 26,900, just under 40 cents. But what if I didn't exchange my money at the black market rate? What if I took my US dollars, I changed them at the official rate, and then with my Lebanese lira or pounds, I paid 50,000 for this. Then it would be 50,000 divided by 1,500, 33 US dollars for a frappuccino if I didn't go by the black market rate which just shows that you can't really survive if you do it the official way the only way to survive in this country if you're visiting for everyday items food anything you need to be able to exchange your money at the unofficial rate connected to this shopping center there is a Vox Cinema, including IMAX. But how much is it for a ticket? 
Hi. Um, how much is it for a standard ticket for Fantastic Beasts? Standard ticket for 85,000. How much, sorry? 85,000. 85,000, okay. And for an IMAX ticket? IMAX is 100,000. 110,000. Okay, thank you. Okay, so there we go. You heard it in this really nice cinema. 85,000 for a standard ticket. So let's see what that comes to at the current black market rate. Just over $3 to go to the cinema here. The IMAX, he said, was 110. four dollars but what if we wanted to just for devil's advocate's sake see what the price would be at the official rate so eighty-five thousand divided by one thousand five hundred if you were going by the official rate then you'd be paying fifty six nearly fifty seven dollars to go and see a film so trading on the black market you have to do and everything is just so much cheaper but then if you go by the official rate then everything is extortionately expensive so there's a really interesting kind of imbalance there and i think as we're starting to see a pattern in this video if you come to lebanon and you bring 500 dollars for a couple of weeks your money is going to go a long way you can go and eat in restaurants you can go to places like Starbucks, you can watch films, and it's really not gonna break your bank at all. In fact, it might be the cheapest place you will do it. But these prices are reflecting local salaries too, and the local, the local uh, means that most people have. I mean, if you're earning just, you know, um, 60, 70 dollars a month, you probably can't afford to come to the cinema or to go to a nice restaurant because the fuel is so expensive, because uh, your electricity is so expensive and things like that so still even though it's only three or four dollars it is too much for the average Lebanese person and I think there is a big gulf between the middle class Lebanese and the very poorest um, so but let me know in the comments below I'm not an expert I'm just trying to show what the current uh, economic uh, situation is like by giving you the prices of everyday things here. What about H&M? How does it fare compared to H&M in other countries? Let's see what they're charging for standard items. I'm going to go to the men's because I'm not really an expert on <laughs> women's clothes and how much different things cost. But we'll just look at like the price of a shirt and say a t-shirt as well. Okay, so I would say normally something like this would cost around 35 US dollars or 30 US dollars. So here it's 319,000 Lebanese lira. Okay, so I was pretty swiftly told to stop filming there in H&M. They didn't want me to show the prices of things, but we did get 319,000 as a quote for that shirt. So let's see how it translates. 319,000 divided by 26,900, 11 US dollars. But if H&M was going by the Lebanese government's official rate, then that shirt would cost 212 US dollars. <laughs> so we have to find a happy medium and uh, I'm not quite sure if we're there. It seems either really cheap or really expensive. Hello, so it's now the evening and I am grabbing something to eat here. And I'm going to go through some prices that you might find in a nice restaurant. I showed the Kake earlier, which is slightly cheaper. Uh, food. So what kind of prices can you expect to find in a nicer place? Lebanese place, you know, there's pictures of Feyruz over there and there's locals, there's people smoking shisha. I'm here with Rahman who also has a YouTube channel as well and he's visiting 
so I'll leave his channel link in the video description. Are you seeing anything on the menu that you like the look of? It's such a huge menu, oh my god, yeah. It's, it's enormous. Everything. Yes. The kind of prices that you can find here, so for the set menu for today, um, there is a shish barak or keba, which is this uh, kind of like stuffed meat dish, and also with veggies and rice, it comes to 165,000 lira or pounds for the keba, and 135,000 for the side. Uh, there's also an a la carte menu. It's really small, so you, you won't really be able to see here. So I'm going to read it for you. Stuffed vine leaves is 75,000. Hot meze, you can get a falafel platter for 49,000. There is an eggplant salad, 55,000. Um, let's have a look at some of the other dishes. Mixed grill, 350,000, a little bit more expensive shish dawuk 175,000 half a barbecue chicken 175,000 and what about desserts i'm seeing some for 80,000 75,000 so actually not so expensive the most expensive thing i can see on there is the uh, mixed grill which is usually slightly more expensive at 350 we definitely ordered a lot this is only the beginning oh wow that looks here amazing. we have tabule with walnut and pomegranate this one is can you remember the name okay. Hin, i don't remember hinder right. something yeah. and then of course hummus and then this is a bulgur wheat dish um again the name escapes me We've got some olives just on the house there. We didn't even ask for those. All our food has arrived. This looks incredible. This is a uh, marinated chicken in the Dar style. Dar is the name of the restaurant. Here we have the raw meat, which is kind of famous here. We've got kibba. What else haven't I shown? I think that's everything. I cannot wait to get stuck in. How are you feeling? Oh man, amazing. Okay, let's do it, let's do it. Together we have demolished most of this uh, food. This is the carnage left. The bill, as you might imagine, is probably going to be quite a lot. So it comes to 711,000. So 711,000 divided by today's rate, which is 26,900 comes to 26 US dollars in total. So all that food in total is 26 US dollars. So between us, that would be $13-ish each. Uh, I think that's very good. You're smiling, right? Oh my God, that's I mean, insane. that just shows you had an absolute feast for, um, in the UK, that would be, you know, just like sort of over 10 pounds, really. Hello, so I'm filming the outro for this video in another country another city i'm around two weeks behind on editing and i apologize by the way for the gap between the previous video from uh, Baalbek and this one uh it's been very hectic the last few weeks i've been moving around quite quickly and i have lots to catch up on following lebanon i bounce to another country nearby that will be revealed in the next video in just a few days time and then i came to this country which i'm now in some of you may be able to identify where it is you can leave your guesses in the comments below so this is the second country after lebanon and this is where i've met my family to spend uh, some time with them for my dad's 70th birthday, which explains the gap between uh, the last video and this one, because I've been busy with my family and things and it's been difficult to find time to edit. But anyway, just to wrap things up in general with Lebanon and prices, I'll just go through accommodation real quick. So the colony where I spent most of my time in Beirut was a hostel. I had my own cabin with a blind with shared bathrooms. Well, I paid around 15 US dollars a night for that room, which was very reasonable and in a decent location. And then I paid 33 US dollars for a private room 
in a guest house in Byblos and then just 20 US dollars for my room in Tripoli. So overall, accommodation isn't gonna break your bank in Lebanon, especially if you exchange your money on the black market, you'll get a good deal. So I'll just end here by saying that I had a great time in Lebanon. I wish I could have spent more time in the country, but I left early because of the elections. And the black market rate has jumped up a fair bit following the elections. I think it went to 34,000 again at one point. It's 30,000 as of today, which is the 1st of June. So it's fluctuating a lot, but it's higher than when I filmed this video. So prices are in fact are even cheaper than when I made this a few weeks ago. Anyway, that's all. I'd love to come back to Lebanon one day, see the mountains, go to the Bekar Valley, go down to Sur or Tyre, and there's plenty more to see in the country. And I only made a few videos because I had to get moving for various reasons, like meeting my family and the elections, etc. So thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next one in a different country. Only 40 minutes flight from Lebanon. Can you guess where it is? See you on the next one.